Hello everybody, I'm Jason Webb and welcome to this demo of All Quiet in the Trenches. Now I should point out before we start that this is a pre-release demo so it won't reflect the finished product and obviously there could be things missing from this demo. There could be new things to be added in the final game so yeah just be aware this is a pre-release demo and I'm going to play it for the first time. Now I don't know too much about this game. I've sort of tried not to uh, not to read too much in case there are spoilers, but I believe from looking at the background there that it's uh, obviously set in the First World War and I believe it's from the German side. So it's going to be interesting to see what the uh, gameplay is, what the story is, because I believe it's sort of a story based game. So yeah, I'd be interested to see uh, this perspective on things. So let's go, let's start. Okay, so it's got like a, um, a sort of cartoony cell shaded aesthetic to it, which is pretty cool. Saturday, May the 15th, 1915. I could still hardly believe that a few days ago, back home, I had been appointed unter officer in charge of this handful of men and here they were sneaking through the trenches behind me not 100 meters from the enemy positions with heavy packs and dwindling strength Karl Menk smaller than his comrade soon pensive but alert Wolfgang Kohn appeared euphoric and full of energy despite the long march Kasper Peterson was slightly stocky and was panting under his heavy pack Jean-Pierre Dana calmly vigilant and keeping his weapon ready. Exhausted, we finally found the dugout of Lieutenant von Karsbruck, to whom we had been assigned. There you are, Herr Unter Officer, he greeted me. You seem to have taken your time. Surely you're fit enough to start work straight away. The, the Lieutenant's... I might just say Lieutenant, it makes it easier. The Lieutenant's condescending gaze swept over me, or swept over my men, and then rested appraisingly on me oh I see so we've got we've got questions here uh, my men are tired you seem to have taken your time surely you're fit enough to start work straight away um, no because we're exhausted I've got to stick up for my men my men are tired my men are tired Herr Lieutenant I objected the train broke down we had to Hurry so that we could. The lieutenant raised his hand. Don't think you'll get away with your laziness. Your lazy excuses with me, Herr uh, Unter Officer. I have to put that nonsense out of your mind. Okay, there's quite a lot of writing here. I don't know whether I'm going to keep reading through all of it. His contemptuous look pierced me. Find your sleeping quarters and then report back to me. In the meantime, I will think of a sufficiently difficult task for your group to learn right away what being tired really means here at the front. I looked at my men's faces. They looked dejected and angry, but also grateful for my attempt to stand up for them. Without so much as another glance at me, Lieutenant von Garsbrook turned back to his documents on this table. Welcome to the trenches, Herr Unter Officer. Okay. So click and hold the left, left mouse button to rotate the camera. Okay. Yep. Click on a loca location icon to jump to it and on people to talk to them. The exclamation mark impo marks important conversations. The button at the bottom right leads through all the interactions required for the end of this turn. Okay. So I can, I can rotate can rotate the view or you can just or you can just actually move the mouse to the left or right okay and you've got various people cone mink it's obviously going to take some time to learn who all your people are okay so I should click on him then to see what Dan has got to say Unter officer, 
We only have the rations left that we took with us. Where are we supposed to get something to eat around here? Okay, so... Nothing else I can do at the moment. The current circumstances are indicated by attribute items, such as weather and resources. So, it's down here. This icon shows shows you your prestige with your superiors on the left and the mood of your soldiers on the right. So prestige on the left, and morale on the right. Or, or, not, or Well, yeah, I suppose it is morale, isn't it? The incidence of a turn often change the values of your soldiers. All recent changes are shown at the top right. Okay, so rations for the day, that's there. Our food supply in the camp may be full and entire company kitchens are responsible for feeding us. But all this is useless if we don't send someone to bring the rations to us in the trenches. Okay, so do I have to send somebody to go and get rations? Uh, so I can talk to various people. Let's just talk to him and see what he's got to say. We're close there, man. We're just waiting sooner or later. We will have to fight. I prefer. I have to say, I would prefer sooner. I'm not made for waiting around like this. So, okay, let's just click on that to see. Someone wants to talk to me. Oh, all, all the way over there. Took you long enough. There's no time to get comfortable. Go and gather your men. A communication trench has collapsed and must be rebuilt immediately. We'll have to take care of your supplies yourself. Send somebody to the supply depot for that. Assign a project to a soldier by dragging his portrait onto the project. I see, so... So these are my people at the moment. So at the moment they're resting and I have to drag them and put them on various places up here. Certain projects have a fixed number of soldiers needed for them. For other projects it's up to you to... Uh, how many soldiers you assign. The more, the higher the impact of the project. Okay, so, so that needs three, but then I need to send one person to get rations. So Cone, Peterson, Dana... So who's the, like, the tiredest? Let's send Peterson to get the rations. And, I, and I'll get these three working on the trenches. There we go. So how do I zoom in and out though? Because I, I can obviously scroll because I don't see how, how I got to him without clicking on the thing over there. I don't know how I got to see... Oh, I see. You go to different locations. You click on dugout. It zooms you over here. I see. So then I presume I would have had to have uh, spun around to here. And then it headquarters. Right, I see. Okay, so they're so they so it's basically turn based. So you set up what you want each person to do for this turn. So obviously rest or do that or do that, and then you click on once you're down here, you click on next turn. So even though people are wandering around here, it's uh, it is turn based, and basically nothing will happen until you click on a turn. So let's go next turn. Okay, so the next day they're all resting again. Oh, so... Who was that? Peterson, so he got lightly wounded. How did that happen? Can I talk to him and find out? That's him over there. Okay, let's find out what happened. I carried out your order but was wounded in the process. Don't worry, it's not bad, I can go on. Okay. So now he's got the status of lightly wounded. Which again, they are in the trenches in the middle of a battle, so any moving about is going to bring risk. So, so at the moment they're still resting, so I suppose I'll go back to headquarters and see what they want me to do next. Let's click on the lieutenant. 
The group is on night watch tonight. Make sure your men don't fall asleep. Okay, so I need to get two people on night watch. So... Right, so if I click on them. When you click on a character, a window with more details appears on the right. Under the portrait is the current morale. High morale tends to lead to positive incidents. Low morale tends to lead to negative ones. Oh, I see, yeah. So that's why Peterson maybe got slightly wounded because his morale was a little bit low. The values below show current circumstances, abilities, personality and attitude of the character. They can influence his morale. Okay, so at the moment there's no personality issues with Cone. So I need to pick two people for Night Watch. So... What does dialogue bring up? Oh, okay, as if I just want to quickly go and talk to him. Right, so Cone... He's got high morale, he's physically fit, he's optimistic, so he'd be a good one for Nightwatch. Peterson. Peterson is injured. Hang on, let's go back to Cohen again. So what's his? He's very tolerant, completely by the book, very patriotic, very courageous, very compassionate. Okay, so Cohen seems to be a good person for it, so let's put Cohen in. Peterson, he's on a bit of a downer, I think. He's clumsy. He's injured. He doesn't necessarily follow orders. He's very unpatriotic. Okay, so he don't, really doesn't want to fight. He's very outspoken. He's somewhat jaded. Somewhat distant. Fairly courageous. Okay, so Peterson... is basically a liability at the moment we really can't trust him to be on watch I don't think so let's have a look at Dana Dana's physically fit but he's tired he's trained in shooting he's trained in melee so he's good right, his favorite. completely by the book fairly outspoken very correct. Okay, so Dana would be good, but he's tired, so that only leaves us with Menk. Menk is... Oh, he's exhausted as well. But he's attentive. And he's dexterous. He's fairly tolerant. He's a bit by the book. Somewhat jaded. He's very distant. Okay, and he's courageous, respectful. Okay, so this is a tricky one. I definitely don't want P Peterson. So it's between Dana and Menk. The only problem I've got with Menk is that it says that he's a bit distant, which I'm thinking if you're on Night Watch, the two people have to kind of be working as a team. There's a risk of injury and it's exhausting, but he's already exhausted. Ah, this is tricky. But I don't, don't want Peterson to do it. Those two are both. I, I think maybe Dana. Because I think Dana would be the sort of person who would soldier through. And plus, he's got good shooting. Let's do Dana. That's it, okay, so let's let's progress. A few hours ago the roar of the artillery had begun. At first it was as quiet as the rumble of thunder in a distance, but recently it had become steadily louder and more threatening. Suddenly there was a thud, and not ten metres from the hiding spot where my men were huddled, an artillery shell shredded the dugout of our neighbouring troop. Pieces of wood and metal flew for metres, and smoke obscured the view. The noise was deafening for a few seconds, then died away as quickly as it had come. An almost eerie, silent gasp of shock passed. Then my men and I jumped up. 
pushed aside broken beams and searched for our buried comrades. We found two for whom all help came too late. A third, however, we could still hear panting. He was lying with his upper body trapped under the fallen beams. His face was distorted with pain and he was barely conscious. My men stood around him, forlorn, and looked over to me for help. Cone said pleadingly, Herr Unterofficer, we must try to help him. Together we lifted the beam from his chest and only now saw the full extent of the damage. His chest looked crushed and his hips strangely twisted. A long splinter protruded from his abdomen and his shirt was soaked in blood. Meng shook his head. He's beyond help. A mercy killing will save him and us both misery. Ah. Uh, so the problem we got here is... See, Menk is the one who's very distant. Cone is the one who's very... Very good, very patriotic, and very follow orders. Menk is a bit distant, and... Uh, and is probably sort of looking after himself more. The problem is, if we put an end to his suffering, that's very bad morale f for the rest of the men, because they're going to think, well... What happens next time when it's me there are they going to help me or are they just going to put me out of my misery so that would have a very detrimental effect to the morale of my troops so we have to try and help because I want my troops to know that they would they would get help if they needed it so get stretcher Get a stretcher, I ordered Cone and Mink. First I wanted to get him out of the wreckage and then decide whether I would expose my men to the danger of carrying him to the military hospital. There the nurses could determine whether and how to help him. Exactly, it's not my decision to make. I'm not a doctor. I get him to the hospital, then they decide the course of action. No man left behind and all that. Okay, so... Cone got lightly wounded, but I think Cone's, I think Cone's okay, and Cone, let's let Cone take him, because Cone cares about him. We're not going to let Menk, because he didn't care. He doesn't really give a damn, and he's tired. Danner is tired. Maybe P Peterson could do it, but then Peterson's clumsy. And he's distant. I think I might have to get Dana to do it. Dana's got the skill and he's got the... He's got the dedication. And he's courageous. Let's get Dana to do it. But I'm putting a lot of pressure on Dana and he's already tired. But... I need to make sure that man gets there safely. But then I'm really going to have to rest Dana in a minute. Okay, and there's something else I need to talk to. I need to talk to Menx. Menx's probably upset now, because I ignored him. Her officer, we hardly have anything left to eat. Someone urgent needs to get supplies from the camp. Otherwise, we won't have anything to, anything by tomorrow. Right, well... You can go and do that, Menk. It's exhausting. There's a risk of injury. Because it's, I mean, Peterson can do it, but he's going to get injured again. I mean, Peterson is just a liability, but then Menk is tired. I think it's going to be Peterson again. I think fetching rations is all he can do at the moment. Go on then, Peterson. And I've still got something else to do here. Defensive position. Who's that? Cone. Damn this artillery. It nearly got me earlier. I felt the shrapnel gazing past my throat. Thank God it only scratched the surface, but it did bleed for a good while. Yeah, so, so Cone got slightly injured there. And I need to talk to him again. 
Her officer. The advance emplacement has been destroyed by artillery. Now we're missing a well-covered position there, and the French have an easy way into our trenches. I'm afraid that if we try to rebuild a position directly on the front line, the French will do their best to prevent it. Okay, now I haven't got... Hmm. I haven't got enough men to do this at the moment. Okay, let's talk to him for a minute. The artillery must have destroyed one of our telephone lines. Instruct one of your men to carry this message to the command post immediately. It looks like the French are planning an attack and we urgently need more men. Okay, so now I've got... Now I understand what they said about the, the wounded person being a liability. Because now it's going to take up two men to get him to the hospital. Right, we'll rebuild the emplacement. Ah, I need somebody to deliver the message. We'll fail if not done this turn. Okay, let's get Menk to deliver the message. And I have to take the wounded. I've not got enough to rebuild that, so that's going to have to wait. Because I need to get that one done. I need to get that one done. And I haven't got enough men to do that anyway. So he can do the rations. And then next round I should have two available. Okay. I mean, Peterson could be in trouble. Because he's clumsy. Right, let's go for it. See what happens. Okay, tired added, so... So who's that? Okay, that's Dana. He's the kind of the hard nut. Hey, officer, the wounded man we took to the field hospital. Unfortunately, he died. We did what we could. The people in the field hospital, too, I guess it was just too late for him. I'm glad we tried, but it's still saddening. Yeah, it is. So what's that done to... Dana now. Okay, so he's affected by that now because he wanted to save him. Right, so I, I could do with rebuilding that. So Cone is physically fit, lightly wounded, but he's tired. Dana's tired. So everybody's tired at the moment. Um, okay. Well, P Peterson, I think you're going to have to rebuild this. Or hole up in the bunker. I mean... It Hang on, stop. But they're still under artillery fire. Perhaps it's not a good idea to rebuild it at the moment. Wait for the artillery fire to stop. So we'll let the four of them rest this round. Hopefully the artillery fire will stop. Then they should all all be fit. Or at least two of them will be fit enough to go out and rebuild the thing. So let's do that. For the past day, my men and I have been sitting tightly packed in our bunker while the French artillery rained down salvo after salvo of death and destruction on us. During the hard work of our first days in the trenches, I had hardly found a quiet minute to have a personal conversation with my men. So now they were sitting next to me, tense. And still mostly strangers. And I fervently hoped that they would survive the shelling unscathed. The silence between us was in sharp contrast to the constant droning outside. 
when, after hours, the firing stopped suddenly. A sigh of relief went through the ranks of some of the young soldiers. However, that was the moment when the veterans of the other troops tensed up and began to load their rifles. A cacophony of whistles snapped us out of our stupor as well. The French were attacking. So, with God for Kaiser and Vaterland. Take it, that means fatherland. I would say stay together, people. I think we've got to stay together as a group, not, not go gung-ho, because the problem in my group is I've got... I've got Dana, who's like the badass and wants to do everything, but then we've also got a couple of people. Peterson, who's clumsy, and Menk, who is um, a little bit standoffish. And then we've got the other one, I think, who's a pacifist. And it's a bit of a live and let live. So I could end up with the, in the situation with Dana running off like a gung-ho action hero and he gets killed because the others stayed behind. So I think we've got to stick together, cover each other. Stay together, people, I shouted to my soldiers and led them to our positions in the trenches. Together we halted and mentally prepared ourselves for the upcoming battle. The enemy has superior numbers. We may soon have to retreat from these trenches. Herr Unter officer, you and your greenhorns are to collect and evacuate all the ammunition you can find. If we're to lose this trench, at least we won't lose our equipment. Battle. Okay, so this is the, this is a new phase. It's still turn-based though. Yeah, good. In battle, you lead your soldiers as a troop. However, you can also give them orders individually, unless they have been separated from the troop. Pay attention to your allied and enemy troops and adjust your tactics accordingly. On each troop, information about it is displayed, such as its stats or its last command. Okay, so... Right, so, so they're holding position. So search alcove or search hideout. So I, I, I don't know which is which. Uh, right, I'm assuming that's the hideout down there. What, so what's the alcove? Is the alcove this little bit in here? Right, let's get let's get Peterson to search the hideout because he's kind of the uh, he's the biggest liability for being up on the surface here, and I want I want Dana to be on lookout, and then Cone maybe he's slightly injured, Mink. He's tired. But he's attentive. And the last one we've got is... Cone. Okay, let's get Cone to do the searching. Let's do that. And those two can take cover for now. They've all sort of bugged out a bit. Okay, let's continue. Troop commands. You can only give your troop one command per turn. The rally command causes your troop to stay at its current position. With the following commands, you can move your troop to another position. Advance, tactical movement, retreat. 
Often a new command also changes the current project of your troop. Okay. So he's got something to say. There was still a bit of ammunition and first aid supplies here. I took everything I could find. Okay. Good work, Cone. What about Peterson? I was able to find some ammunition. Okay. Right, so what's the situation we got then? We got... Who are they? Hang on, so I'm not sure what side's what side here. Advance, advance. Hang on, so... Okay, so, so the green's us and that's the enemy. Right, so they're getting close. I think my I think my group should right let's see what the instructions they've got. So they are hold position. They're holding position. I've got to bear in mind that I've only got rookies. They're holding position. They're ho okay, so everybody's holding position at the moment, so Let's just get everybody to take cover for a minute, because we're everyone's holding position. Oh, but 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 they are coming. I, I need to fall back now. In grenade rain and right. Okay. You need to retreat to there, I think. When you click on a command for your troop, a window will with further details appears on the right. This window shows the approximate danger level for executing this command. Alternatively, the advantages and disadvantages of the position are displayed here. So cover, melee range. Okay. So that's melee range, or I could go there. That's the, So that's cover two, melee one, cover two, melee one. Retreat, very low danger. Um, yeah, okay, let's let's retreat to there. Somebody wants to say something. Peterson, what's up? The French are over there. We have to get out of here. I know. I know, mate. I'm going. We're going. Let's go. up mink heads down artillery okay I think we need to get into there that's going to give us good protection from artillery away from the battle and find equipment okay it looks like a place for us Okay, I need one person to search the crates. Who's the best at that? Menk, I think. Start with him. Light stress. Okay, he's getting stressed. Cone. Dana. Okay, I think everybody's stressed. Right, so let's get Menk to do it. Everybody else. Let's keep everybody together while he's searching. I don't want I don't want people to get away. I don't, I don't want people to get split up. 
Okay, let's do that. Okay, what you found, Mink? I was able to find some ammunition. Okay, good. So I think we just need to keep heading on the retreat. So let's try to go all the way to there. Go for it. The following commands are executed by your soldiers on the spot, which means that, that they remain at their current position. Hold. Suppress. Rally. Changing the command also changes the current project of your troop in addition the allied soldiers in your immediate proximity will react to your actions soldiers we are falling back retreat to the next defensive line someone's got something to say Dana what's up we should provide cover fire so our comrades can re retreat I agree. Let's get um, Peterson to search the crates. And the rest of them suppress. Okay. What did you find, Peterson? Okay, you couldn't find anything. Right. So we need to get across the creek, which is what direction? I don't know what direction we're supposed to be going in now. In the direction of the rear trench. Okay, um, what's, what's the easiest way to get there? So we've got people on that side. Oh, I don't want to end up getting cut off. No, if, if, right, if we go this way, we're going to get cut off. We've got one lot over there who are in big trouble. We're in, yeah, I think we need to keep... I think we need to go this way and keep together with this lot. Or we could try and go over there. I mean, that's risky. Ah, this is tricky. Try and get over there, but that's a long way. They've basically got to pop out the trenches. I'm a bit worried about going in this direction. Oh, this is tricky, isn't it? What does that offer? Okay, let's go there. Oh, all right, that's that's the creek. So what does that offer? OK, 
Okay, what you got, Cone? Damn. My wound has worsened. Please let us escape quickly. I don't know how much longer I can hold out. Okay. Right, so if you go there, we've got moderate cover, find equipment, but there's corpses in the area. That's going to be a. That's not going to be good. We can go there. Try the first place. Right, let's go over there. Or we could get there. Okay, let's go there because we're supposed to find equipment. Let's go there first. Okay, Peterson, search the crates. Wow. Okay, let's let, let's let's suppress. We need to get out of here in a minute, though. What did you find, Peterson? Find some ammunition. Okay. Retreat. That's going to be a bad, bad spot. Let's retreat to there. Low danger. Go. Okay, let's keep. I mean, do we want to fall back further? We could fall back to there. That's a long way to go. Retreat across the creek. Okay, let's do that. What are you doing in the creek? Get out of the creek. The explosions, gunshots, and screams still echoed in my ears. We had only been fighting for a few minutes, and yet it felt as if years had passed since this morning. And the everyday life back home, a lifetime away. To be in the camp now, safely far behind the front, was surreal. The light-hearted chirping of the birds almost drowned out the dull rumble of the front and the cries of pain from the field hospital where we had taken Cone. My people lay down exhausted on the grass, surrounded by the boxes of ammunition and equipment we had saved. Dirty and bloodied, some still pale and trembling, but soon the angry voice of the lieutenant in the distance abruptly broke the supposed peace, even before we, we could see him coming towards us amidst the tents. He's probably angry because we didn't collect enough ammo. Uh, on your feet, men, because he seems pissed. On your feet, men, I ordered, and motioned my men to stand at attention. Lieutenant von Karsburg looked satisfied. But a look at the meagre ammunition supplies immediately ruined his good impression. Ludicrous performance, her and to officer, he assessed angrily. You and your people can't even manage the simplest task. Apparently, with this bunch of slobs, you have to be happy if anyone shows even a modicum of competency. Our troops were in the best position for a counterattack, but no, the reserve was too cowardly to take advantage of this unique opportunity we had prepared for them. The lieutenant rumbled without prompting. And now the Herr Major accuses me. 
us of having abandoned the trench line unnecessarily. A disgrace. Henceforth we will hold the line, come what may. There was no holding the line. My people did their best. Right, so, that, so now this is tricky. I either support my men or I bow down to him or I sort of argue the point. Uh, what should I say? My people did their best. Should I stick up for my for my troop? And then he won't like me. I think I've got to support my men. Because at the end of the day, if the men don't feel that they're being supported, they're going to disobey my orders. I think I'm going to stick up for my men. Screw you here, Lieutenant. My people did their best. My people did their best. I defended my soldier's performance. The lieutenant raised an eyebrow sceptically. Then I expect drastic improvements from you and your people. My promotion to Oberlieutenant is at stake, he lectured me. Set up a camp, Herr Unter Officer. Sooner or later we'll get our chance to pay back the French, he ordered, and left us to take our, out his dis displeasures on others. Okay, so Cone's in the field hospital at the moment. Because he's wounded. So what can I do here? I can go to the field hospital, see Cone. Have I got anyone else to talk to at the moment? No. Oh, what's over there? The field kitchen. Okay, let's head over there. Who's that? Field Cook Zielinski. Dialogues are an important element of the game. Symbols on the side provide information about effects. Creates projects, changes values, etc. The star symbol means that this dialogue is available due to circumstances and could be gone the next turn. Dialogues can also have negative effects. Dialogues without a symbol have no effect and are mainly meant to provide information. Okay. Welcome to the camp, Herr Unter Officer. It's a pleasure to meet you. I'm Anton Zielinski, your field cook. I'm afraid I can't cook anything for you right now, though, as your squad hasn't been allocated supplies yet. Better contact field intendant, field intendant, Henek. He is responsible for your supplies. Leave. Okay, so headquarters. Let's leave the headquarters for a minute. Let's go and visit. Who was it? Cone in the hospital. I want to support my men. Oh, you've got to speak to the nurse and Elizabeth. Ah, oh, you're Cone's Unter officer. I'm Sister Elizabeth Ritter. I organise our small field hospital here. Don't worry, Cone is doing pretty well. He will soon recover from his wound. I'm honestly glad you were. You were overwhelmed so quickly. The shorter a skirmish, the fewer dead and wounded. Defeat is good as far as I'm concerned. Certainly, yes. The lieutenant can throw a fit about losing the trench line all he wants, but I'm content with not being overburdened and nobody dying under my care, just because we don't have enough time for proper treatment. I'm not going to reprimand her. She's... At the end of the day, her job is to... No, I'm, I'm, I'm going to agree. I'm going to agree. At the end of the day, it's no good throwing people into the mincer and then expecting her to sort it out. Agree. Defeat is good. So, so that is, a, I think that's classed as a negative one. Defeat is good. I'm going to agree, agree. I'm glad you see it that way too. There are some people in this camp who believe that the war will be decided right here. Complete nonsense. They want fame and glory. As a nurse, I know there's only agony and death to be won here. Leave. 
Okay. Maybe I've taken the pacifist view here, but... But again, there's no point piling people into an unwinnable battle. Better to fall back, regroup, and uh, work on strategy. Right, Logistics Officer Hennick. You're the new group's int officer, right? Field Lieutenant Hennick, responsible for supplying the troops. I'll allocate some supplies to a group immediately. This sh should last until the next supply shipment. Talk to me if you need anything. Here's the good cooperation here, int officer. So... Okay, so he's going to allocate some supplies anyway. Until the next shipment. I mean, should I offer some help? Perhaps I could help him out? It's always good to uh, be on the good side of the supply officer, isn't it? Let's offer some help. Glad you asked, Herr Unter Officer. The artillery is using a lot of ammunition these days. My people have already complained that they can hardly keep up. There's no harm in having more helpers to load the cart. I'll take as many as you can spare. Okay, I mean, I know my men should be resting. Great, I'll let my people know. Okay, so let's leave for now, because unless it's got a star next to it, it means that these will be available next time I come back. So I can leave for now. Right, so unload carts. So Peterson... I mean, he's tired. What's that mean? Oh, he's a big eater. Oh, he is a liability, isn't he? Dana. I said, Dana, mind you, everybody's tired. But, and he's, he's physically fit, but he's clumsy. He's physically fit. Menk isn't. Menk's a bit of a... Let's get these two to do it. Let's get, let's get these two to do it. But now, if I'm not going to have to set up camp, delay will have consequences. Ah. Damn it. Okay, so I need somebody to set up. Hold on. Right, now let's... Okay, right. You, you unload the carts. You can set up the camp. Mink can set up the camp. Oh, actually, let's get Dana to, Dana to help him set up the camp. And old um, Peterson can do the unloading. Let's do that. Okay, and I've still got something I've not done yet. Uh, oh, over here. Field kitchen. Wonderful, I just got the delivery from the field intent intendant. What size rations should I give your people? If you want to do something good for them, then I would suggest double rations. Just talk to me whenever you want to change your troops' rations. Okay, rations. Um, I wish it was always that easy. Regulation issue. Ra okay, well, we don't want to... I know that Peterson wants to eat a lot, but... At the end of the day, we're a, we don't deserve double rations yet. We've not done enough to... We barely did anything in the last battle, so I think it would be taking the piss if we had double rations. So we'll just stick to what everyone else is having. Maintain rations. Leave. Okay, so let's progress. Every time I saw Mink, I almost didn't trust my own eyes. I could not help but wonder if that boy was old enough to be drafted. He was short, his shoulders narrow, and there was not a hint of peach fuzz on his cheeks, let alone a beard. I felt the impulse to look out for him. He would have to keep up. Surely the young man would have his own uses. Um, I think he is useful because he's got good observation. 
So I, I kind of think he's... He can bring something useful. Because I have been choosing him a lot to do some of the searching and stuff. So yeah, surely the young man would have his own uses. When he passed me, I acknowledged him with a nod. Good to have you with us, I told him with a smile. But Menk seemed to have seem to have noticed my initial doubts. I know I don't exactly have the stature of an ancient gladiator, but this is an ancient Rome, is it? He asked and grinned cheekily. Meanwhile, he swiftly opened the internal magazine of his rifle with a soft click and checked the mechanical functionality of the weapon, presumably to underline his argument. Yeah, so you see, he's a smart one. We need some brains on the battlefield. You've got your wits about you. I mean, he's checking his gun, he's checking it all, so he's he's smart. Yeah. I appreciate smart. You've got your wits about you. I like that, I told him. Keep that up and we won't have any issues. He beamed with pride and hurried off as if to make a point that he wasn't idling. I continue. One evening, Dana was sitting in front of his tent, polishing his boots with dedication. Peterson came up and quietly watched for a bit before asking, Why do you even bother? They'll just get dirty again. Dana frowned. So do clothes and homes, and you still clean those, don't you? Peterson shrugged. But those don't get dirty every other step. Our boots do, especially in this mud. Besides, who am I supposed to impress with my shiny boots around here? Yeah, see, Peterson, there's a bit of a personality crash, personality clash there. Danner is very much by the book. He's following orders. He's going to do everything to the numbers, whereas Peterson is a bit of a half arsed He isn't, just isn't into it, I don't think. He's just on a bit of a downer. Hmm. But then Peterson, I think, is f physically fit. Hearing that, Dana paused, laid down his cleaning rag and locked eyes with Peterson, his expression sombre and grave. Honour demands that a German soldier is to represent the fatherland at all times. With a contemptuous downward gaze, he added, and your boots are a disgrace to the fatherland. Peterson rolled his eyes dismissively. It was then that he noticed me, and for a moment a worry flashed across his face. Hurting to officer? So that so this is tricky here. I don't want to say the fatherland does not concern itself with your boots because that's going to upset Danner and he's basically the best fighter that I've got in the troop. I need to do something. I th I think Peterson needs kicking into shape because he's um. I so I think he's quite physically fit and tough, but he's clumsy and everything. And I think maybe I don't want to bu sort of bully the guy. We don't want a full metal jacket scenario going on here, but, um, you know, he at least needs to try and keep in line. Otherwise, it's sort of disrespectful for the other people in the troop. If they're making an effort and keeping all their boots clean and everything else, and I'm just letting him get away with it, then I'm just going to get dissension within the troop. So I think I've got to get him to clean his boots. Clean your dirty boots, I ordered Peterson strictly. He mumbled something under his breath, but begrudgingly complied. Dana gave me a respectful nod. Okay, yeah, so Dana knows knows what's up. I say Peterson needs to learn a bit, because at the end of the day we are in a battle here, and uh, he's going to get himself killed if he doesn't learn to follow some level of orders, I suppose. So what we got? Oh, we got a fifth person. Hello, who's the fifth guy? Old blonde comb over. Hunt. So what's he got to offer? Physically fit, exhausted, very tolerant, very pragmatic, fairly diplomatic, fairly courageous, very sociable, fairly compassionate. 
Okay, so he's a bit of a he's a bit of a player. He's not that good, is he? Let's see who he is then. Hunt. You look like you're exactly the man I'm looking for. Her onters are wonderful. If I may introduce myself, Reinhard Hunt. Your new guy. I uh I hope my predecessor is fine. Your new guy, yeah. So he's 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 a little bit he's a little bit slack. He's like the uh, he's like the kind of player. He's I'm not going to impose. Personal issues. What do you want to know, Herr Officer? Origin. Tell me where you're from. I'm from Neustadt on the Dose, but I'm more drawn to Berlin. Where so much is happening right now. Okay, what about family? My parents sent me to war to get me back on track. Uh, I mean, of course I wanted to go to war. And my parents support me in this. Okay, someone giving bigger rations, imposed punishment, no. No, it's alright, don't worry. I wish it'd let you browse them without mind you I think this is only uh cosmetic. I don't think it's actually affecting anything when I until I actually click the thing. Okay, let's leave. Cause I don't think I've upset him yet, have I? Neutral, no. Right. So who's who have we got back? So so Cone's back now. Cone's all recovered. Did Peterson react badly to me? No, not really. Okay, so who have I got to talk to? Headquarters. Lieutenant von Karsbrook. These villagers are suspect. I keep hearing stories of partisans attacking our comrades along the front. Organised some patrols through the village, hurt and officer. Show the friends who's in control here so they don't get any foolish ideas. Fine. I know it's going to kind of over little proof mistakes if you allocate some men to the entrenchment efforts, the more the better. Okay, let's accept and then leave. All right, so let's patrol the village. Let's get um, let's get Menk and Dana because they're like the best fighters at the moment. Cone, Peterson. Hunt. Let's get Hunt and Cone to do it and oh, sorry, Hunt and the new guy. And Cone can just set up the camp. That'll do. Oh, and there's still something to do here. Uh talk to him. The supply is running low. Slowly running low. I loathe giving the men insufficient rations, but it could become necessary very soon. I hope you can make sure that won't happen. Rations. Can't you serve in the men the regulation is your own? My heart aches. But given the state of our supplies, the lower the rations might be in order lest we run out. Um, I think it's better to lower the rations for now. Because if we run out, then we are in trouble. Okay. I mean, it's not going to make them happy, but... And tent camp. What 
what sort we got over here? Uh, oh, okay, cones back. Yeah, I've been released from the hospital here, and officer. I'm still a bit bruised, but I'm feeling a lot better already. The rest will surely heal soon. Let's find out about his origin. I come from the upper Silesia, from Ratibur. We manufacture everything, steel, cigar, soap. We even have a railroad workshop. Family. Good family. We're doing well. My father is my greatest rumble, and I want to make him proud. One day I want people to respect me the way he is respected. Okay, so that's just... Hang on, he's still got a thing over him. Click. The latrine is filtered and someone should take care of it before it overflows. Latrine. Oh, crikey, latrine fatigue. Right, well this is going to be problematic because whoever I get to, to do that is going to be pretty annoyed. Let's get Peterson to do it. Since he's the one who said that things will just get dirty again. Yeah, I don't know. I get I get a feeling that he's not going to like me. Oh, and there's still one more thing to do. I haven't got enough people for all this. Village outskirts. Hello, Madame Laroche. Bonjour, Monsieur. Are you a hair hunter officer whose people pitch their tents right there at the camp entrance? My name is Marianne Laroche. I am one of the village elders in our community. Since I can speak German, I try my best to mediate between the residents of the village and the soldiers here in the camp. Ask her for food, maybe? The harvest is enforcing my monsieur. If you send some of your men to help, we'll gladly give you a share of the harvest. Oh, I haven't got enough people for that at the moment. Um... I create a work project. I will, so I'll say you're all right because I'll have to do it next turn. Okay, I can progress. Lieutenant von Karlsburg had just finished one of his inspections of our camp and was on his way to the next troop when Peterson came up to me. He made sure that the lieutenant was no longer within earshot when he nudged me with his elbow and gave me a crooked grin. How can you stay so serious when he's around? I couldn't do that. Such a posh aristocrat with his detached ideas of how things should be. He began to imitate one of the lieutenant's speeches about the importance of preserving the, sh the sh shine of our uniform buttons and then interrupted himself with an amused snort. Okay, now obviously I've been a bit mean to Peterson and he's a little bit disrespectful. But then again, I did say that I was going to stick up for my men, and so I think I'm going to take his side. Peterson laughed and added, it's not like he cares why he gets a medal, as long as he can show off at home without actually doing anything himself. Back to our duties. Oh, crikey, so we got a whole morale issue going on. Oh, things are getting harsh. So who have we got to talk to here then? So we got we got a mission over there again. Okay, so we got one for logistics officer. Trade provisions, so I've got to do this one. If you give me some of your canned meat and have a man move it all, I'll give you bigger brigade ration for your people in return. Well, this will make your rations more boring and you will end up with significantly more daily rations than before. Do we have a deal? Um, okay. Because more of any food is better than less of. 
better food, if you see what I mean. Let's agree. Wonderful. Okay. Let's see what he's got to say first. I finally took the major order at the start of an offensive this morning. Unfortunately, we don't don't get a chance to win fame and honour just yet. We're in reserve for the time being. Make sure your men are ready to move out at all times. After all, we don't want to disappoint the major wants to find out. Uh, okay. Uh, we'll fail if not done this turn. Right, so let's get Hunt is tired as morale's low. Cone is tired. I mean everybody's tired, aren't they? Dan is strained. Right, let's get Menk and Dana to do it. Oh, is there only one person? Right, hang on then, let's get let's get Dana to do it. Oh hang on, we've still got another mission to go. Uh the field laundry can't keep up with the demand. To relieve them, your unit will be responsible for keeping their uniforms clean by themselves. Remember that army standards are to be upheld nonetheless, her and to officer leave. So laundry duty Okay, so he's already he's already slightly demoralised, but I think Cone's good. Cone wants to be proud, so I think Cone's gonna let's get Cone doing it because Cone seems to be uh, willing to put the effort in. And we've got the field hospital. Let's speak to Elizabeth. We need to help with something here in the hospital. Requested help. Thank you for taking the time here and to officer. Sister Elizabeth seemed tense, even though the field hospital did not seem too crowded at the moment. Please follow me, she motioned, and led me past the hospital towards a barren patch of land with a series of shallow ditches dug in a line. Graves. I heard there's a new offensive coming. Elizabeth paused and turned towards me with dire seriousness in her eyes and pointing towards the graves. Well, we're going to need a lot more of those. Do you think you could spare some of your men to dig more of them? Of course we'll help out. I mean, it's not the best job, but you've got to respect your own dead, haven't you? So of course we'll help out. Of course we'll help out, I promised her. I could see the relief in her eyes when that load came off her shoulders. Thank you so much, Herr and officer. You're not just helping the hospital, you're helping everyone who comes through here, perhaps even yourself. If we run out of spaces for the dead, we also run out of space and time for those who might still be saved. She gave me a tired smile, gently squeezed my arm and slowly made her way back to the field hospital. So who are we going to get to dig graves then? Peterson, I'm afraid. And Mink is happy. Okay, let's, let's get Mink to do it. I mean, it's not the best job. And the new boy gets to rest. Hunt, because he's a little bit demoralised at the moment. After my deal with the f field intendant, Zelensky could only give me extremely small portions of meat. While the rations were being dis distributed, some of the men grumbled discontently about the situation. I blamed the dire su supplies on the field intendant. No. I explained the trade I made to them. I think I have to be honest. I 
I explained the trade I made to them. Less meat for us in exchange for more, other, for more of other rations that would nourish us longer. There's a few grammatical errors in this. There's a full stop missing there in a space. It took some time to calm them down, but eventually the men accepted my explanation. Some nodded in agreement, others seemed rather snivelling. But no one showed any resentment. Yeah, but better to be honest in this situation. One evening, Hunt came back to camp with a whole crate worth of food. He placed it with the rest of our stock and wandered off, whistling and lost in thought. When our eyes met, he hesitated for a brief, unsure moment before muttering a friendly greeting. I did not mention the food. I praised his initiative for the good of the unit. I demanded to know where the food had come from. Mm. See, Hunt is the new boy who's is a bit of a player. And I don't entirely trust him because he said that his parents basically enlisted him to try and straighten him out. So if, if he's thieved it from somewhere and I do nothing about it, then that could bring my whole troop into disrepute. So I think I need to I, I need to know where it's come from. Where did you get that food I demanded to know? Does it matter as long as we have something to eat? He asked a little defensive, but I did not relent. And after a few moments, he gave in to me under my stern eyes. I saw the crate just standing around near the field intendant's storehouse. And well, half an hour later, it was still sitting there. Contents can't have been terribly important, so I thought I'd just take it, he replied with a calm shrug. Yeah, he's... I think he needs to keep it in line. In that case, well done. All right, but this has to stay between us. Return the crate immediately. I think he needs to return it. We, we can't just be nicking stuff, because we're all... We're all in this war together. We can't just be nicking stuff that doesn't... Uh, that's not been given to us. We don't want to be the bad guys of this army. Return the crate immediately. Return the crate immediately, I demanded. Hunt seemed baffled, but eventually he relented and begrudgingly marched back to the storehouse. Madame Laroche, the speaker of the nearby French village, greeted me with a smile, but quickly cut to the chase of why she'd come to meet me. Your cannons have been thundering day and night, and the villagers are scared, she explained. Especially the younger ch children are suffering. It was only in that moment that it occurred to me that our artillery truly had been firing almost non-stop for some time now. Of course, the distant, if constant, grumbling paled in comparison to the actual impacts we faced on the battlefield. And I'd long learned to put the noise out of my mind, or perhaps my hearing had just gotten that bad. Do you perhaps know how long this will continue? Madame Laroche asked carefully. So I quite like all the little moral dilemmas you get in this. So it's, it's a good mix. You've got the little... You've got some little tactical things on the battlefield that we saw. But then you've got this whole moral dilemma of trying to balance your... Um, Balance your troops. It will be some time yet, I'm afraid. We recently launched our offensive. Until the Major decides it's been enough. I am not about to spill military secrets. Ah, yes, see, that's the problem, isn't it? You've got to remember that we are the Germans here. She is Madame Laroche. And she is presumably French. So... So possibly she could be French resistance. Because it did say that she's been coming and helping, sort of talking to some members of the camp and translating for some of the soldiers. So it's also feasible that she could be uh, she could be a spy trying to get information. So I don't think I want to say to her that we recently launched an offensive because loose lips sink ships, as they say. So I think I just have to... And I don't really want to say I, that one's a little, little bit aggressive as she's genuinely been helping us so, th so I think I would just say until the Major decides it's been long enough until the Major decides it's been enough I commented with a shrug after all we had to live with the noise just like they did and no one bothered to notify us about these things Madame Loche frowned at 
my dismissive reply. Let's hope that time will come soon, she sighed before casting a sharp glance over in the direction of the battery and adding, for the sake of our husbands and sons on the other side as well. With that, she said her brief goodbyes and turned and walked away. Yeah, see, that's a very telling statement, isn't it? For the sake of our husbands and sons on the other side as well. So obviously she's well aware that the French villagers have family on the other side. So where do her loyalties lie? Interesting. Ah, it's a little interesting dynamic to the game, actually. Actually dealing with civilians. Okay, the low supplies are taking a toll. So who went to the pub? Dana and Hunt went to the pub. I've got to do something about rations. Sunny. Low supply stock. I think I might have to try and get some more supplies. Who wants... Hello, who are you? Fram? Who's Fram? You. Hilton officer, right? Excuse me, I've had little practice with these military rank insignia. I was placed under your order. Fram, my name. Elmar Fram. Okay. Well, let's just be nice to him. What's his origin? Vienna may be my adopted home, but that's where I belong. Everything that was before feels like from another life that's strange to me. I'm lucky to have come to this wonderful city. It's not really a city at the moment. You're in the middle of a muddy field. Family. Let's learn about him. I'm a family man and I'll be happy to check in at home in a few months. Okay. So... How are you morale-wise? Oh, you're tired as well. But the good weather, your skills. You're a first aider. You're slow. But you're attentive. Fairly unpatriotic. Um, so, who wants laundry duty? Fram? You're a family man, aren't you? And I need to try and raise some food for us. Let's go to the field kitchen. With your permission, I would like to give them larger portions to get them back into shape. No, standard rations. Let's go back to standard rations then, but... I need to rustle up some more supplies though. Low supply stocks. That's. Oh, I can't speak to. Go to headquarters. Um, let's speak to him for a minute. I need to rustle up some more supplies. I'm sorry, but we're still waiting for fresh supplies. I can't give you much. My stop is almost empty. Okay, let's have a look at the next shipment. It should have been a while ago. Unfortunately, I don't know how long it will take for that. All right. Can I help you in some other way? Right, first things first. Hang on, let's see what, what he's got to say. I don't want to take on too many tasks at the moment. We have a few prisoners of war in our camp that need guarding until they can be moved to prison. Until then, it will be your responsibility. Okay, so I need some guards. So, Dana is the best as a, for guarding. And then I need somebody who's who's patriotic. Completely by the but very patriotic. I think Cone. Because I think the problem with these others is that they're a bit... Um, they're a bit wishy-washy.
Okay, let's see if I can offer help. Already complained they can hardly keep up. There's no harm in having more helpers to load the cart. Okay. So let's get... Let's get Peterson to do it. And let's get... He's a little bit tired. Ah, oh, Hank's all right. Oh, hang on. Is, is that going... Hang on, I'm not sure whether one bar or two bars bad on that. I'm tired, exhausted. Oh. So when it's red, the more bars is bad. He's exhausted. Right, hang on a minute. Okay, well, let's get... Let's get Hunt to do it. You can unload carts to teach you not to steal. Okay, now we've still got another crucial task somewhere. Tent camp. Somebody I've not spoken to. Oh, Dana. There's a pub in the village here, Hunt Officer. Hunt and I would like to visit with your permission. Well, you've already been there, haven't you? Oh, they want to visit. Okay, they haven't already been there. Um... Trip to the pub. Will fail if not done this turn. <sighs> I can't let you go to the pub. I mean, other people have got work going on. No, you sorry. You, you can't go to the pub. There's other people working. So it looks like it's jumping a few days at the moment because it's the demo, I presume. I presume in the proper game it will maybe go day by day. Or, or perhaps it does only go week by week, but... So I assume for the purpose of the demo it is jumping over a bit of time. Mould everywhere, Zelensky commented as he held out an exemplary loaf of bread covered in green stains. To me, I'll have to throw it away. I load my gaze anxiously to the basket of baked goods at his feet. The warehouse was still well stocked for the moment. Get rid of it, better safe than sorry. Save what can be saved. I mean, we don't just want to be throwing away bread willy-nilly. Save what can be saved. I, I uh, cut away the mould. We'll keep the rest. But obviously, that's dangerous. I can't condone it. <sighs> hmm. I think all right then. Get rid of it. I. If it was me, I would eat it, but I can't risk illness sweeping through the thing and Zelensky's going to have a bad attitude about doing it. Okay, get rid of it then. All right then, get rid of it. I relented. Zelensky nodded with relief and sighed, but in my heart I agree with you, it's a terrible waste and he's set to work. Cone came hurrying towards me, clearly upset and with a bloodstained uniform. Herr and officer, have you seen the sorry state of the field hospital? He asked, visibly aghast. I just helped carry one of the wounded who couldn't make it on his own to the field hospital. The injured are everywhere and the beds are overflowing already. The nurses just told me to drop him off wherever, that they had no time to tend to him anyhow. I'd known with the intense fighting of the last few days that a lot of injured were passing through our camp, but to think that the state of the field hospital had already gotten so bad. Is there nothing to be done, the soldier pleaded with me. I will look into it, it's not a response to you. I think we'll do everything we can to help, because the hospital is there to benefit us as well. 
we can't uh I mean we, we can't neglect it for all we know we might need it one day we need to do everything we can to help I agreed of course this was primarily about saving our wounded comrades lives but a less overburdened field hospital might also be a help to ourselves if any of us were to be wounded on our next development deployment exactly I'm sure the others would help as well, Cone added with conviction and hurried away, probably to inform his comrades. I should talk to Elizabeth soon and offer help. So, okay, first I need to see what our official order... Hang on, let's talk to... Okay, we've got a few things going on here. What's Hunt up to? The Enterprise of Latrine is filled to the brim. Someone should take care of it before it overflows. Okay, so we've got latrine duty for somebody. We've got laundry duty for somebody to do. Menk. After that, Peterson hardly worked at all. I can't see he had to do and fix things that were supposed to be his job. So there's issues with Peterson again. Who's he with a green star on? Okay. I need to talk to Peterson in a minute. But first things first, let's... Uh, Let's see what we've got at headquarters. You're ordered to expand the rear trenches. Don't let any artillery or snipers dissuade you. Okay, so I need somebody on laundry, somebody on latrine. And I need to talk to Peterson. Peterson. Hospital's overburdened. Let's go back here. Right, let's talk to Peterson. Where's he gone? There he is. See what he's got to say. Hello there. Lack of work ethic. I'm tired and everything hurts. I did what I could under the circumstances. I can't do more than that. I'm sorry somebody else had to pick up the slack for me, but I need a break or it won't get any better. Ah... What do we do about Peterson? See, I mean, he's physically fit. But he eats a lot. He's strained. So he doesn't really like following orders. He's very sort of unpatriotic or he's outspoken, he's jaded. He's somewhat distant, he's fairly courageous. So he's clumsy. Recent events, so he's I'm kind of inclined to agree with him to give him another chance. Because I think he's kind of genuinely, I don't think he's doing it on purpose to be lazy. I think he's sort of genuinely feeling feeling worn down so you've got a note sheet there so so can you keep notes that's that's interesting I, I, I like that I'm married doesn't have children I think it'd be kind of useful if it gave you their age there as well next to the because I sort of forget what we're in 1914 1915 at the moment or are we in 1917 now? I think, I think we're in 1917, aren't we? I think so. So I sort of forget what they're. 
so it'd be useful if their age was just there rather than working it out. But but I like the fact that you can you can stick little notes in there. So, so I could put in there like a bit of a problem. And presumably I just close that. And close. So that's nice. So, so, so I like that. Being able to sort of build up a little record of the people. Um, I'm going to say all right. I'm going to say all right. Let's just, just talk to him. I come from sure so I, I have work, friends are home. What more can I ask? The city's okay. We are Danes among Germans. That's not ideal. Uh, of course, he's a Dane. Yeah, he, hence Peterson. I thought that was kind of obviously uh, not a... I don't know. Is it? No, I suppose it isn't a German name, is it? It's more a... Uh, can't think of the word I'm looking for. Family. Well, I'm not an orphan, if that's what you mean. Okay, so he doesn't really want to talk about talk about it, does he? Well, okay, so... We're going to get the old guy doing laundry again. Because he's... He's a family man. He's not. He's got a wife. He's got kids. So he's not shy about doing a bit of laundry. Uh, latrine duty. Let's get Hunt to do it. And we're gonna get them to do. And I'm gonna let Peterson rest. I'm gonna let him rest. Mind you, one of these is more exhausted than him, aren't they? No, not too bad. Let's let Peterson rest. Now, this could be a controversial decision here. But I'm going to let him rest. And see if he kind of snaps himself out of it. Because he's also not eating enough because he's a big eater. So let's just see if he see if he snaps himself out of it. And, and and eventually I need to do something about the field hospital as well, but not this round. Okay. So let's go. All gone, sighed the man on the other side of the table, taking the last sip of liquor. He was also an unter-officer. His group was camped next to ours, and our men often spent their free time together. A rat infestation had destroyed the group's food stash almost completely. I know you have to look out for yourselves too, but... He visibly struggled to get the next sentence out. Could you and your group perhaps give us some supplies? Our own camp was adequately filled at the moment, but it was certainly not set up to supply double to the amount of men. I am responsible for my people and only my people. I'm sorry, but I can't help. I will see what we can spare. Um, I don't want to do that one because, you know, again, we're all kind of brothers in arms as they say you know we're all on the same side here and who knows one day we could be relying on these people to save our ass I don't want to say I'm, I'll say I'll, I'll see what we can spare I, I think we, we have to try I will see what we can spare, I promised him. Infinite relief was written on his face and posture, even though shame was still visibly weighing on him. He thanked me with few words, but noticeably from the bottom of his heart. 
and promise to repay me appropriately for this generous act in the future. So we've got we've got low food supplies again. It's sunny, low stock, hospital overburdened. Right, I think I need to. I mean, I really need to talk to the hospital, don't I? Talk to Elizabeth there and see if I can do something. Elizabeth, current workload, offer assistance. Your gift and God hurt your men would be a great help. As many as you can spare. Right, accept. Send them. Okay, um, so Fram, you can do the laundry again. So let's see what else we've got on off. Okay, so we're going to have to see what headquarters are. Because the problem is we can't turn down... We can't turn down him. We're going to battle soon. I hope you keep your people ready as ordered. I expect you and your men to give it all on the field. This is our chance to chase the French out of those trenches once and for all. Okay, so... Let's see about him. Resupply came in. I had him bring your ration directly to your unit stockpile. Okay, good. So we got ration sorted. So... What's he got to say? The storehouse is overflowing, Herr and officer. I will serve double rations from now on before anything goes to waste or attracts vermin. Okay, so it's really just helping out the hospital then. So, Peterson, I gave you a rest last time. You help out the hospital, okay? Cone, I think, is happy to help. Dana, he's getting a bit worn out. So okay, Hunt can help out. Mink, uh, I'll tell you what, actually, let's give now. Let's let Mink, do you want to help? Okay, it's only one person. Okay, the rest of you can all assist in the hospital. Let's see if we can sort that out. Engagement, what's that? Engagement one. Oh, okay, so that's saying that engagement is one one turn away is going to be battle, basically. Okay, that could be bad, because my people didn't get rested at all, to be honest. They've been too busy doing stuff. Right, next turn. We were preparing for the imminent operation a few days from now. The mood was tense enough, but it seemed to weigh particularly hard on Fram. When he had heard of our upcoming deployment, he had turned power and the fear had not left his eyes since. I see Fram, Fram's a sort of... He's an older guy, isn't he? He's got a family. I mean, a lot of them got families, but... Let's show some compassion. Is everything all right? Is everything all right? asked him carefully. Perhaps there was some way to help him handle the situation. He looked up and made an attempt at concealing his emotions before finally sighing deeply and opening up a little. To be honest, no, Hurtant officer. The thought of going to battle and possibly never return. He gulped and lowered his gaze. I nodded. Every soldier knew this fear. Just do your duty as a German soldier. No, we have to learn to live with the fear. Together we'll come through. Yeah, that one. Together we'll come through, I promised. You and I are all our comrades. You and I and all our comrades. We just have to watch out for one another. 
He skeptically glanced over towards the other men, his features hardened. And what are they supposed to do against a bullet destined for me? He turned away and returned to his tasks, as if to make it abundantly clear that he considered the conversation over. Mm. Turmoil in a village could be heard before we saw the smoke and flames in the otherwise dark night. A barn had caught fire and now the villagers scrambled to prevent the fire from spreading. Do we help the villagers? It could be a trap. We go to fight the fire and then we get ambushed. It wasn't our problem. I monitored the situation, ready to intervene. We rushed to their aid. I suppose we should help because maybe the villagers have been supplying us with food. I think that's what the woman said, wasn't it? Madame Laroche. Is that they were supplying us from their harvest. So if the barns get burnt, that's our supply line gone. So I think we need to help. We rushed to their aid. I hastily gathered my men, burdened them with as many buckets as we could find and led into the village. The villagers met us with surprise and gratefulness and together we successfully pulled the pyre. After work was done, the French civilians brought some refreshments and gifts of gratitude to me and my men. Some of my men stayed for a while and enjoyed the attention and gratefulness. Others quickly went back to our own camp. Okay. Men, tomorrow we march to battle, announced Lieutenant von Karsbruck. He had summoned all his subordinate officers to discuss the upcoming operation. Their fear of what might come was clearly palpable, but most of them did their best to cover it up with their heads high and chests puffed up with pride. The goal of our mission is to conquer and hold the next trench line, the lieutenant explained the plan. So far there was no difference to most attack plans. But we have an ace up our sleeve. Our artillery is in position, just waiting to cut off reinforcements from the enemy. I expect you to use this advantage aggressively and decisively. Do not disappoint me. At your command, Lieutenant. The officers around me expressed with varying degrees of enthusiasm. I said nothing. No, I, I have to... I have to be official about this. At your command, Lieutenant, I joined them. Lieutenant nodded, satisfied, saluted and dismissed us. And that's the end of the demo. So there she goes. So, so the full game will be released in early access on the 17th of January 2024. And okay, so I was I really enjoyed that. And and I was impressed by it. I, I actually I really got into the um you know into the backstory of all my of all my soldiers and you know learning about them and learning about their little traits and their little personalities and everything. And I I actually did find myself sort of starting to care about them and think of themselves as individuals. So yeah, I'm. I think I'm impressed by this, and I think I'm gonna w wish list it and keep an eye on it, and then uh, yeah, hopefully check it out when it releases. So th there you go. You can you can play this demo yourself on Steam. I'll put a link to it in the video description, and you can wish list the game if you want to keep an eye on it. And if you've enjoyed this video, then uh, please subscribe to this channel and give this video a like. And I will see you soon. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.